Who knew that colour could create so much controversy? When it comes to mixing bright colours, many artists are coming to realise that traditional colour theory just doesn't work. Red, blue and yellow are not the best primary colours to make every other colour. So in today's video, we are talking all things colour theory and answering the question, which colour wheel is correct and which is the right one to use? I love colour. And if you've seen my previous videos, I often talk about choosing colors that work well together and using the color wheel to find the best color harmonies. In fact, I have a whole video about it right here. But as I expected, my video did not come without criticism almost immediately because I was apparently using the wrong color wheel. Before filming that video, I did some research and I uncovered a huge controversy in the art world that I knew I would have to address as more people watch my video. The red, blue, yellow versus the cyan, yellow, magenta debate. And in that video, I promised that I would talk more about the other color wheels in a future video. So here we are, because here's the thing. You can't actually create a bright pink or a magenta with these colors. You can't create a vibrant green by mixing a traditional yellow and blue. And red, blue and yellow are not the best primary colors to make every other color. You might be wondering why I still teach using this color wheel and this color theory for color harmonies and color combinations, and I'll get into all of that throughout this video. There's a little bit of science and history to get into, but as usual, I'll try to keep this simple and I'll include some extra resources in my blog post in the description below if you'd like to research this further for yourself. So first, what is the whole point of all this? Why do we even have color theory? The purpose of any of these color wheels is firstly to help us choose colors that work well together in color schemes, in color palettes for design, in patterns, in paintings, in interior design, and so on. It's also to help us understand relationships between colors and to help us understand how colors mix together to create new colors. In short, it's to help us make better art. The main argument that arises in this debate usually comes down to the difference between two main wheels in particular, the traditional red, blue, and yellow color wheel versus the modern cyan, magenta, and yellow color wheel. But it is just not that simple. And that's why I wanted to take this chance to go a little more in depth with you in the history of these wheels and why they are both important and relevant. Let's start by looking at the traditional color wheel, the one that you're probably already familiar with from school and that I used in my previous video about choosing colors that work well together. We are taught in school that the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. When mixed together, these make the secondary colors green, orange, and purple, or violet. Take it a step further and you'll get the tertiary colors, yellow, green, red, orange, and so on. People have been trying to make sense of colors for hundreds of years. When Isaac Newton first released his theories about color and light in the 1700s, it wasn't completely scientifically accurate to what we know today but it was the first time someone had taken such a big leap in color theory. It was his groundbreaking experiments that showed us that prisms could disassemble and reassemble white light into a full spectrum of colors. Newton's color wheel was actually originally based on light, not paint, but it was adapted by the art world and became an incredibly popular tool by artists and teachers in helping us to understand how colors work together. Our understanding of color has changed a lot over history with the inventions of television, photography, color printing, and more scientific research into color, red, yellow, and blue are no longer considered the best primary colors to create the largest range of colors in light, paint or ink, and yet they are still the main primary colors taught in just about every school worldwide. So let's take a look at this for ourselves. Have you ever tried using a set of paints that only included these primary colors plus black and white? It's impossible to create a bright green or a hot pink and some of the other colors as well. In fact, many kids sets include green as an extra paint color because it's impossible to mix a nice green with the blue and yellow that they include. This is not a new concept, by the way. Back in the 1900s, Albert Munsell published a book saying that the notion of red, yellow, and blue as primary colors was a widely accepted error. You sit on a throne of lies. It's okay, your childhood education was not a lie. 
It just wasn't the complete picture. Let me explain in a moment, but first let's look at the alternative color wheels that have entered the color theory debate. Introducing RGB and CMY. These two color wheels work hand in hand. RGB is an additive color model used to mix light, whereas CMY is a subtractive color model used to mix pigments or dyes. They are essentially opposites. The primary colors of one wheel are the secondary colors of the other. The additive primary colors are red, green, and blue. Mixing these lights together can make a huge range of colors. The subtractive primary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. Mixing these pigments together can make an even bigger and brighter range of colors than the traditional red, yellow, and blue primary colors. If the terms RGB and CMY or CMYK seem familiar, it's probably because computers and TVs use red, green, and blue lights to display the colors on your screen, and your printer uses cyan, magenta, and yellow ink to print colors along with a black toner or ink, which is the K in CMYK, K standing for key printing plate. Red, yellow, and blue cannot make nearly as many colors as cyan, magenta, and yellow. You can't make cyan or magenta with any combination of red, yellow, and blue, but you can make red, yellow, and blue with cyan, yellow, and magenta. So what are some of the other color theories? We also have psychological primaries, the natural color system, and imaginary primaries. Yes, a real thing, back to that shortly. And all of these theories come with different approaches, different diagrams, and different primary colors. The thing about the different color wheels is just because there are multiple color wheels doesn't necessarily mean that one is strictly right and one is strictly wrong. I've been told that red, yellow, and blue can't possibly be correct because red is not a primary color because you can make red from yellow and magenta, which is true by the way, you can. But what is the definition of a primary color? Because a lot of this fuss is caused because people define a primary color as being a color unable to be made from any other color. But this is not how the dictionary defines a primary color, at least not anymore. The current definition is that a primary color is any of a group of colors from which all other colors can be obtained by mixing. So can red, blue, and yellow, along with black and white, make every color? Well, yes, sort of, but not really well. Red, yellow, and blue cannot make nearly as many colors as cyan, magenta, and yellow. But cyan, magenta, and yellow aren't the perfect solution either. Blank. I don't, I don't understand. The CMYK that your printer uses was designed as the most economical way to produce a wide range of colors for printing, but it technically still can't produce every color. It is not the best at vibrant purples and you can actually produce a better orange with the red, yellow, blue model. In fact, Pantone created a hexachrome printing ink system that could print brighter and clearer pictures by adding orange and green inks to make CMYKOG. This produced far better skin tones and pastels and was able to better recreate the colors that you see on your screen. It was discontinued in 2008, but there are similar six color processes already used by other printers. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more of these in mainstream printers as technology improves and costs come down. Then we have those imaginary primaries. Who let maths get involved? I Googled this and the Wikipedia page was literally titled Impossible Color. So to oversimplify this in an embarrassing, non-mathematical way, Imaginary primaries are hypothetical colors that humans are incapable of seeing. The CIE 1931 color system was created to capture the full gamut of colors that humans can see. And because this range of colors actually ranges on a curve rather than a flat edge, don't even ask me about the maths here. It's impossible to choose any number of primary colors within the gamut of colors that would mix to create every color that we can see. Here is the problem with every other system that exists and why the only solution is to create imaginary primaries. For real. 
Mathematically, choosing colours outside the gamut is the only way to choose colours that would actually mix to create all the colours in the middle. And those colours just don't exist. My brain just can't even. We still don't seem to have a perfect one size fits all system because color is complex and maybe it's something we'll never fully understand. Here's the problem with all of these theories. Color isn't circular at all. It doesn't fit in a convenient wheel. When you consider that color is actually wavelengths of light and that we can only see a small section of a huge spectrum of these waves, it's impressive that we've even been able to map it out as well as we have. Just because I have to get this out of my head and I can't not talk about it. Did you know that magenta doesn't actually have a wavelength at all? So technically it doesn't exist. There's no pink in the rainbow. Your eyes are making it up. It is a figment of your imagination. A pigment of your imagination. Shane, is it cruel to just throw that out there and not give the science behind it? Yes. I don't have time. It's okay, I'll, I'll put it in the blog. I'll put it in the blog. It's beyond comprehension that we've been able to create any kind of system or theory to recreate and organize these colors in lights and inks, in paints and pencils that are accessible to us to use and create art with, and that somehow we can actually recreate what we see on the paper in front of us. Honestly, it's mind boggling and humbling that we even have the tools to unlock such creativity. But before we get lost down a whole different rabbit hole, let's come back to the main point of this video. Which color wheel should you use? And should we be teaching our kids cyan, yellow and magenta instead of red, blue and yellow? The whole point of any color system is to make these colors more accessible. Color is complicated beyond what we can possibly comprehend, but creating these color wheels and color systems can help us to make sense of how colors work to a point that we can even learn to mix and make our own colors in our art. For this purpose, we shouldn't discard any of these color systems. Instead, we should use them as a guide to experiment and create. Let's think about our CMY versus RYB debate when it comes to first teaching kids the different colors. Magenta and cyan are very specific colors, whereas red and blue can be conceptual colors. By that, I mean they can refer to a broader category of colors that are easily taught and understood in society. We can teach kids the sky is blue, the grass is green, the dog is brown, without getting into specific shades or hues. The word blue can include cerulean, navy blue, azure, indigo, ultramarine, baby blue, royal blue, and the list goes on. We don't teach kids how to identify these individual colors. In fact, many adults probably wouldn't be able to identify half of these colors as even falling into the blue category unless they were interested in art. Most companies don't even use the same names for colors anymore. In fact, I had quite the challenge trying to identify some strange color names in one of my older videos. Our five-year-old son very specifically tells us that the color of the sky is cyan and it's not something I taught him, but I am a little bit proud. But that's not normal for a five-year-old. When it comes to teaching colors to kids, we teach in general color groups, not specifics. So it makes sense that we would use a simplified color wheel instead of a color wheel that relies on specific colors like magenta and cyan. And the traditional color wheel still meets the basic needs to teach kids how to mix colors and how colors work together. While it won't produce the best green, yellow and blue do make green. And it's a much simpler concept for kids to learn because it works from the psychological primaries, which I haven't had time to go into today, but you can find more about them in the sources on my blog. But maybe the CMY subtractive wheel should be taught earlier in school. It's a shame that some art students aren't even learning this better method for mixing colors in university. 
I never even realized it was an alternative will until recently. And it makes a lot of sense to use cyan and magenta instead of red and blue if you really want to mix a bigger and brighter range of colors. After all, that's what our printers use. But then we're not teaching kids about mixing light either. And kids are using screens far more than traditional mediums now. So what age should we introduce them to RGB? So in summary, which color wheel should you use? When it comes to mixing paints or pencils, the CMY wheel does produce a better range of colors. If you're working on a screen, computer, or with lights, the RGB is the right color wheel. But when it comes to choosing colors that work well together, or if you're a beginner and trying to just find somewhere to start, personally, I still prefer the traditional color wheel. I've looked at each of the color harmony rules when applied to the CMY wheel and they still work, but I feel that throwing the traditional color wheel out the window is actually a mistake here. The color harmonies still work on the CMY wheel, but I just feel the harmonies on the traditional wheel look better and more cohesive. But here's the thing about art, it's all about perception, experience and improvisation. Art is ultimately an expression of freedom and there are no rules that say you have to follow or agree with any particular colour theory or system in order to be an artist. Colours are fascinating and the science behind them absolutely blows my mind. But instead of letting these theories dictate the rules of creativity, we can use all of this as a starting point and a guide to answer our questions about colour and give us a framework to understanding how colours work well together. The true primary colours have been a debate between artists, scientists, philosophers and professors for centuries. So we can get caught up in the debate or we can choose to use what we already know and love colour for what it is. All of these theories, all of these ideas are supposed to help us experience colour. So let's do that and let's just create. Obviously, this is just a small piece of the massive puzzle that scientists, philosophers, artists and mathematicians have been trying to understand for years. So I am certainly not going to have presented the whole story in perfect accuracy, but I would love to hear your comments anyway. And I have included all of this in a written version with lots of pictures on my blog, which you can find in the description below, along with links to the sources I used for my own research if you would like to learn more about color theory or go in depth into the science side of color. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more videos about art, color, and choosing colors that work well together. And remember to check out my website below for some other great resources to help you choose colors in your creative work.